All righty. Welcome back to race two of the evening. We have Mac McD versus Go Go BMN. Should be a pretty good race. Uh, we got me, Apache, and Platonic on comms. How are you guys? I'm doing all right. What's up, guys? I'm uh, very much enjoying myself. Looking forward to this one. It's a big one. And they should be going here in a moment. We'll get this race underway. So, um, BMN, Mac McD, uh, two two old school runners. BMN's newer to very easy. Mac McD is one of the pioneers of very easy. Um, BMN is five and three in the standings with eighteen points. Currently seated fifth. Um, he is on fire as of late. He has gotten a bunch of one hundred twos. Um, but back in his own right, um, he can put up a 102 at any time. He's got the skill, he's got the talent. He just lacks the, the consistency to a degree. And no, I, I like how BMN has the in-game timer on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That'll be from his new trainer, possibly. Uh, he's yep. always releasing new updated trainers, showing us uh, what this game can do with some tools to run it with. I think uh, what's worth mentioning about both these players is neither of them have the record or stand-ins that they should actually have. Um, they've had some strange performances. They've had some losses that should have never taken place, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with uh, with week one, um, BMN uh, being defeated by Apache. Um, that's a huge, huge win for you, <laughs> but, but yeah. I won't lie. I won't lie. Um, I got very lucky in that race. So standard right side for BMN. Mac dealing with left side I've Olga. We'll see if he gets the loop. I, I, grew up on the I hate field. left side Go Olga, man. That, it doesn't feel good. I've had pretty much all right so far, but he's got the loop, so you're always happy if you get it. What's interesting about BMN is we can see what type of Olka, like in terms of time, I think it was a 132 Olka, so pretty decent. <laughs> and he's just telling us in uh, our backstage that he didn't mean to have timer on, so poop, timer go bye bye. So there you go. Preview <laughs> the tool, but we're not, we're no timer for the rest of the race. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to see what Olgri had. Ah, beautiful dev drop from Mac McD. Really nice setup for that. B-Man didn't get it, but obviously he's not on stream one. Stream one always gets it. That means I'm not going to get it later today. Oh. Nope, sorry. <laughs> no. Nope. no, it doesn't mean you won't get it. It just one gets it more often. Wait, the timer's back. Oh, no. Oh. Why is the timer <laughs> back? No, I think it just goes away during load zones and cutscenes. Because I noticed that oh. before Olga. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure we'll turn it off when there's a a realistic moment to do it. Probably Fortune. That's the or first like break you oh. get, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of fun to see the pace throughout the run, and this is a very clean tool to to implement. So I don't know. I like it a lot. I actually think it's extremely beneficial um, for the game if we could display that on screen. I mean, I wouldn't suggest forcing it, but so oh, what's this engine man strat? This is nice. <laughs> Okay. BMN has experimented with like 15 different variants of engine room. He knows like every way you can get through this room. And this strat that he's doing, he's the only person to do this. I don't think it's going to work that card. Oh no, it worked out. Never mind. Yep. It's so risky the way he does it. It's so scary. And Macro, uh, not Macro, uh, Mac <laughs> went for the traditional uh, engine room. So Mac uh, definitely holding his own early. Uh, it's it's a smidge of a lead. Uh, but neither of them blew up the ship. We still have yet to see that. Uh, not many opportunities left, but I'm glad we haven't seen the ship getting blown up. Traditional 1974 strats. Which I think we will see out of Mac McD here in the hallway. BMA going to opt for the, the newer USP approach. Shoot the guard and then trank him so the last guard gets into his uh, position quicker. The enemy's attacking. Stay alert, everyone. But guard rush coming up can definitely be a separator. Um, as we saw in the previous race, Makarov had a very clean guard rush. Apache did struggle a bit. It separated them through 
throughout a fair bit of the race early on. So this could set the tone early, depending on what we get. Yeah, I, w I was still struggling to catch up at Fat Man, so it, it makes a real difference. And looking good for Mac McD. See, I never like to hit that guard if I'm not going to kill him, because it generally makes him go into cover. It looks like you can hit the right guard when he's in cover, but you actually can't. He's completely invincible. I think they both had equivalent guard rushes where they missed one of them. Yeah, I Max feel like B-Man's was slightly faster. I think Max was slightly faster, but either way. <laughs> Shows what we know. <laughs> we're at the holds. This is, this is hell, so... Yeah, a good um, foot shot. every single uh, racer yeah. in V League has had a continue in the holds. Except um, for BMN, as far as I am aware. Wait, oh, yeah, he didn't I mention that. Like, he asserted had. to us, didn't he? I think it's My BMN is the only My one. Bad. My bad, BMN. My bad. You're just going to curse him now? I would have went off. <laughs> Oh my god. Two spot photos for uh, Mac. I forgot Monk. the camera. <laughs> Monk oh, no, he's, no, he's doing a different two spots. Oh, come on, man. What is this? <laughs> Listen, if this was a like a, a, an Olympic swimming dive where they hold up the scores, we'd all be holding zero. Yeah, Five we'd all be holding photos. zero for that one. Oh, uh, this is you incredible. Know, <laughs> if it ain't broke... If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. You can see the IGT in the photo itself. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. So funny. That's pretty great. Oh. They are just right. they are just images, right? They, they You can go in and, like, change them in your files. So they are I just so, images. Yeah. They are just, like, JPEGs or whatever. Oh, Mac gets stuck on the thing. I've never seen anybody get stuck there before. Is he, no, is he just either. not watch, watching the screen or what? That was a weird Some one. Weird... Still close. Still close early on. That's, hey, you mentioned, though. Right? You mentioned how you can change the photos. That's interesting. You could press start and then cheat photos in and then just go straight to the, straight to the computer. <laughs> and get a zero spot photo. Yeah. No, I'd just go in and change it for pictures of like Brandon Flowers and have that instead. <laughs> but have a trigger so that's the proper photo or for some reason. But anyway. Not a lot going on early in plant, per usual. Codex cutscenes, all that jazz. Um, I think we'll see both go back and pick up the M9 just for just for the memes. You can pick it up early here in the docks. And it doesn't cost you any time. Yeah, defo oh. B-Man because he invented it. Um, yeah, he's not allowed to do anything else. He's the one who brought this forward to all of us. Yep. I just... You'll never see me doing it. I I, I, I don't see the point. <laughs> I don't want to do anything that could cause me to lose time. But it's free. As long as you do it all correctly, yeah. I'd, I'd probably get stuck under the under the shelves getting the M9 or something. Or you'll like do a, a weird glitch or something and you get stuck inside of it. Oh. Yeah, probably. Well, that can happen on Sun Celebrity version, the PS2 version. Is that when you do the out of bounds glitch or just in general? If you cartwheel like into where like the shelf that the M9's under, if you like cartwheel into that on Soul, you can just get stuck in there. I've seen Tyler get stuck in there. Uh, yeah. I do remember software. when Tyler lost a run because of that. I think it was right before Fortune, wasn't it? Yep. Oh, yep. No. You can't do it on substance, but it can be done on Soul. Anyway, enough about that crap. PS2 sucks. I don't know, I disagree. I think the HD collection is the worst version of this game. Um, it's It sucks on PS3 because you have credit freezes. Um, it's a fine version otherwise. I just don't like PS2. I just, I don't know. It's just me. It's just too slow. 
I think, you know, B-Man's trailing slightly, but he is ruthlessly efficient at basically every area in this whole game. Like, he's such a good runner. Um, and his movement is getting to that absolute top level, I feel. Um, for a while, there was only a couple of people that can move exceptionally in the game, which is the pair of you um, and Azu in brackets. But um, B-Man's getting there. He's definitely getting there. Like, there was a few second gap when we started playing. They're tied. They are basically tied right now. B-Man is making up time just on movement. And we're not even at bomb disposal yet, which we're going to see different routes in all likelihood. Wow, really nice time. cartwheel into the Stillman cutscene. Do you know that's actually faster than uh, walking into it normally? <sighs> Don't get me started, dude. Anyway. And just as I thought, Platonic, why don't you tell us about what's going on? All right. Um, so they're going both opposite ways. Mac is just going to do the traditional clockwise bomb disposal route, starting with strut C and just going in a clockwise manner, diffusing every bomb that you see it until you end up with strut C again. Uh, BMN is going to do what's called the conveyor belt route, which was found by Stealth Edge earlier this year. Um, essentially, we're going to go counterclockwise, then at strut E, we're going to use the conveyor belt to teleport around different struts, and then go clock clockwise again. Um, on paper, and when you first see it, it looks ridiculous, it looks really, really slow. But when you actually time it out, on this category specifically, it's practically equivalent. So it's ultimately down to preference, whichever one you want to do. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks cooler to do um, because you go, you pick up boxes and go on the conveyor belt and all that stuff. It has the potential if you do it like really, really well to be a smidge faster than the, the clockwise route. But you got to perform at such a high level that it's equivalent at best. Most runners tend to lose like a second or so, but B-Man's one of the better ones at the conveyor belt, and I think he'll be fine. Um, and for reference, they were essentially even entering bomb disposal. So we'll see what the gap is once they uh, get up to, to the strut A roof again, going towards Fortune. I think becoming good with the conveyor belt now is going to pay, um, pay it for the future when you're learning other difficulties. I think conveyor belt at the highest level... Uh, is how you should do every difficulty. I think yeah. uh, one day we're going to see HDC runs and uh, I guess Soul as well. Probably all of them just do conveyor belts. It's just how. Oh, Mac. Trouble with the bomb. A lot of time lost there. Oh, that's rough. Probably lost five seconds or so at least. But at least yeah. you got the guard there. Um, you don't want an alert right as you exit the door with the assault team units. Yeah, Plywood had an issue with that in his race where he just took the alert and then you get the backup team come through the, the parcel room door and they're just blocking your path and it's very difficult to get past them without getting kicked. So yeah, good awareness. The other thing Ooh. is, in, during bomb disposal, you want to always be ready to cool and rise out of when, you, when you're on the ground. You want to get used to it. If you get knocked over, instantly cool and rise. Yeah, so this is the first area where the runs are going to converge with each other, just going in opposite directions. Um, the second point is when they finally meet up at strut A roof. Yeah, that's how you time it generally, right? Whoever gets out of that strut A door first, isn't that? Is that yeah, strut A roof. That's basically where the end of bomb disposal is. Yeah, I feel like B-Man's quite talented at getting that uh, conveyor belt glitch. It's a little bit awkward. You have the potential to soft lock the game um, whenever you go on the conveyor belt because if you drop down the other side, there's no way to get out. And uh, you'll see them equip the box as soon as they get on the conveyor belt to prevent that. You can't fall off while you're in the box, basically. Yeah, the only way you can get out of that is by taking your continue. So you'd have to lure the guard over and try to get him to kill you, and that alone is just a challenge. It takes about 69 bullets on very easy. Yeah, man, my god. Double cart wheels down struck the helipad. Yeah, that's <laughs> not cool at all. His um, his bomb on the on the heliport underneath the Harrier looked really rough. He was exactly as far away from it as you could be. 
So here's the first instance where BMN is going to use the conveyor belt glitch. Angling his, his uh, angling right in uh, so that you can glitch onto that conveyor belt. Um, that's the main reason this works. If you were to just get on the conveyor belt the way the game wants you to, there'd be no way this would be faster. It's too slow to do it that way. But luckily this glitch was found a few years ago by, I think, Magnum, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's what makes this rap works. Yeah, shout out Magnum. He's found a lot of different glitches. Um, a lot of it usable in speedruns as well. He found like the Com Tower skip in Metal Gear Solid 1. Um, plenty of stuff he's investigating in Metal Gear Solid 2 as well. Uh, and 3 as well. Really, really clever guy. Shout out to him. So this is one of the advantages of uh, having the box now. You usually see this trick used on other difficulties. Uh, if a guard spots you and you equip the box, they won't shoot you, so you, they'll just run away from you. Uh, this is another example of it. That guard spots you, he's now in intrusion mode while he's trying to call an alert. Uh, that skips that cutscene with the camera as well, which on the regular route, the only way you'd be able to do that is by shooting out the camera itself. Yeah, I love that um, box trick. Box, very useful in Metal Gear games. Good item. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, even though BMN went counterclockwise at the start, um, using the box to teleport to strut C, or sorry, strut B where he did, he then goes backwards clockwise. So that's why he's going clockwise now to strut E where he's going to use the glitch again, while Mac is uh, on his way to the strut A roof. So it's basically a race to see who gets there first. Yeah, I feel like Max keeping in it pretty well here. I think B-Man will be slightly ahead, but Mac is uh, doing well. Yeah. Oh, a little, ooh, a little trouble getting on the box. Uh, on the conveyor belt. There you go, second attempt. Uh, so I would say they're half a strut A room apart right now. So that's just three, four seconds at best. Maybe less they're, as well. They're basically on the same step. On the I'm I'm on the restream view. The oh, huh. <laughs> they look they might close. be a little behind for me as well. <laughs> they look they look neck. I might just refresh I my stream just in case. Forever apart, to be honest with you. Incredible scenes so far. Um, I've been very much looking forward to this race. Mac is in a uh, precarious position. Um, he needs to he needs to win basically to make playoffs. Right, I'm pretty sure he has to win one of two, maybe even both, depending on how other races go. So he's going to give it his all in the, his all in this race. B-Man with a little bit of a safety turn there. Did you see that? He was worried he was going to end yeah. up in the water, so he did a look down before he changed weapons. Oh, Mac. That's, he, he answered the code oh, too called. early, and then he called as well. Ugh. That is rough. Feels like a feels like an old-school mistake, that, right? Like That's like such a back-in-the-day mistake. I do that every once in a while. You answer too early, and for some reason you're just holding X or something. I, f I feel like Mac, like Makarov, Mayu, they don't really do mistakes like that, but we all did, did stuff like that <laughs> when we were learning so much. I don't know. I think it's just because we're too angsty to um, answer the codec as early as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get in frame one obsession with like frame <laughs> ones, whereas the new runners, they have to worry about so many other things. <laughs> there, you know, there was nothing going on. We had to try and answer the codecs as quickly as possible. So we've talked about the fortune strat a lot before. This fight is an auto scroller in name only. Um, the objective of the fight is just to survive the whole time. But if you go into this without any plan, you're gonna lose a lot of time. Uh, what we found out is that fortune needs to destroy certain objects in the fight for it to 
progress faster. The biggest one is the forklift. If you don't destroy that as early as possible, uh, this fight could go on forever, just last so long. And then there are other things like the yellow barrels, the brown boxes, not getting her to talk and stuff. I think both players had a pretty good fortune fight as well. Yeah, as good as it can be. I mean, that's all you're hoping for, really. No extra lines of dialogue. Um, her not taking her time shooting the uh, shooting the barrels. <laughs> nice spin. Weird spin <laughs> oh, from back, but he got it. So. I think that's called a pirouette. And uh, ballet fans, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, that was really nice from Mac McD. Yeah. Yeah, we saw BMN use the box again there. Um, the box in this game, if you equip it, you can take a lot like sharper turns. It's easier to like just angle yourself properly, so it makes picking up those chop grenades a bit easier. I'm paying attention to BMN's menus right now. He he's keeping the M9 equipped which is usually a tell that he's going to be going for M9 Fat Man, and he is very, very good at that. Uh, Mac is likely going to opt for the SOCOM lethal approach. Generally a little more consistent, not as awkward to do, but B-Man gets this Fat Man correctly. Well, he doesn't have it now. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that I predicted the Swim Glitch Apocalypse, and I, f I feel like that's come to pass, right? We are in living in the Swim Glitch Apocalypse. <laughs> um, next is the M9 Apocalypse. M9 non-lethal Fat Man. Okay. That is coming. That is so coming. Okay. Everyone's going to do it. Um, No. Anyway. It all, it all <laughs> comes from setups. Once a setup exists, people are drawn to things that have setups. So yeah, he's definitely going for it. He has it. Oh, Mac doesn't get the fast bomb. B-Man did. Beautiful there movement. There you go, perfect. Oh, uh, perfect. What a slow bomb. Insane. Yep. Unfortunate, yeah. I knew he was going to get it with his position, but overall, uh, he's well ahead of Mac McD based on those fat mans. Good RNG, though. Very good, Kevin yeah. Walk path, fast bomb to end the fight. On the timer, it's about a three-second difference, so... Um, yeah. That's basically what M9 Fat Mine gives you compared, like, perfect, not perfect M9 Fat Mine versus perfect, uh, Ooh, so, didn't move at all. so a little, little sluggish. Better, better to not move than to cartwheel into the container. Or, uh, with what Tino posted earlier, better to not equip the Claymore and just blow up the whole strut. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, you shouldn't <laughs> do that, like... Yeah. I don't hopefully you won't do that in his race, but uh yeah, that's <laughs> uncommon to say the least. I wouldn't mind it considering I'm the one who's playing against him. <laughs> I was you watching... don't need any help, like come on. Yeah. I was watching the clip and I thought, whoa, is he about to do some crazy sequence break? No, he's just breaking he's just blowing up the He's, just he's breaking his run, that's what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're on EF. Um kinda have to talk about D pad versus analog. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, there's a way to never get blown up by using the D-pad, and some people still don't do it because they're stupid. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. B-Man ain't stupid, and McD ain't stupid either. Like, these are, again, two Class A runners who know what they're doing, who have their heads on straight, and that aren't idiots. So, um, yeah, never use analog. I, I, I really want to say, like, over the course of this league, the, the quality of the movement in this run has just gone up tenfold. I think everyone, every single runner in the league has improved their movement in some way. Uh, and we're seeing some like crazy new strats coming into play now. Uh, cartwheeling over staircases, aerial, stereos, seeing them all the time now. D-Man going for the newer Claymore strat. I think yeah. Mac isn't going to go for it. I like this new uh, Claymore strat. I like it when my opponent does it and messes it up. Because this is like such a dangerous room. You oh, extended lose... the alerts. That's interesting. Yeah, I noticed that. You can, you can lose lifetimes in this room. Oh, he got stuck on the wall. Okay. Should be fine, though. The elevator is still going to be open. Yeah. yeah, just risky. Just for no apparent reason. Mac going for the... The, the late warning shot, that way he gets the alert and skips a cutscene. He had a lot of trouble with that in his last race. He did it just a hair too early and lost 
a lot of time. Minutes. He there. lost minutes, right? He lost the race there. Oh, BMN um, seeing my setup for um, the retinal scanner. That's nice. All right. Where is the mullet guy? I don't think either player do pause for struts. Nah. Ooh, old lady's falling no. for BMN. That could be intentional. Oh, I nice like line. That, that is a really risk. Does. That is a risky line, but it paid off for him. Big time. Yeah, Gambling, not games, but ended up being okay. We're seeing a lot more gambling at Ames, a bit of gambling going on. Joe likes to gamble in that room too, right? Oh, he likes to go. Mac, that's the oh, worst possible case. Yeah. Very, very bad. But it's still relatively close. Like, it's it's not insurmountable by any means. So, um, despite all of B-Man's success in League, he's had a lot of trouble on Harrier. He's got to get out of the room in time and it's like the right floor. Yeah. Wow, that was close. Uh, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, you get an alert before exiting that room. You can't use the elevator. You have to wait out for the alert to go. It's it's fastest compared to other difficulties, but it's lifetimes in terms of your, in terms of your speed run. It's literally hmm. lifetimes watching that alert go down. Fancy card field BMN on EF. Do you think that that's probably the easiest one to do out of the new? I think uh, the strut e helipad is the easiest one. Yes, that's by far the easiest. Yeah, can you just hold down left, right, and wait for a ride into turn? Since yeah, I was messing yeah. with it today. You can also use D-pad for it. Yeah, I like analog. That way, I can get the slightly better angle. Yeah, you'll but, get yeah. a better angle with analog. Yeah, and I don't blow myself up because there's no mines in that area. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see stats on, on B-Man's Harrier across the the entire league. But he's so resourceful between races that it wouldn't even surprise me if he went for a 6 plus 1 now. Like, he always seems to come to a new race with something that he's picked up and learned in his own time. Yeah, I, I, I'll i wager and say that. He's, you're probably not going to see a 6 shot here. Um, like I said before... He hasn't had a lot of good Harriers. Like, he hasn't had really bad ones either. Just a missed shot here and there. But just, he's shaky. He's always shaky with Harrier. So this is an opportunity, potentially. Yeah, I feel like you'd have to, like, really go out on a limb to say that's his weak point. He's pretty solid at all the run. Yeah. I mean, he's got a 102 1x. I mean, that's he's close to record. We had sensors. Interesting they took the Cypher before last, but I think Plywood also does something similar to this. Yeah. He waited very okay. cautiously with that one. Mac can get aggressive here, gain a little bit of time. Didn't go for swag. Alright, Harry for BMM. One, two, three, four. <laughs> iffy. Alright, good. No, that'll be and fine. it's high damage yeah. as well. High damage. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the unequipping for that final shot when they're when as soon as you hit the target. Okay, Mac gets three, four, iffy on the fifth, gets it. B Man's out of here, you're perfect. This is looking good for Mac as well. Tad late on the plus one, but gets it. Let's go, Mac. I don't think a Oh, it's just jumping ahead. It's a little late on the, the, the die shots, but this should work. Perfect. Two perfect Harriers. Very nice. What's interesting is that he went down for the menu, but then he unequipped the Stinger. I think that might just be muscle memory. Beat that oh, you might, you <laughs> my might. god, be a Jeez. He rightly adjusted a little bit when he was hanging as well. Oh, Mac that was edgy. It was super edgy. Thanks for keeping it entertaining, guys. We appreciate it. Oh my god. <laughs> this uh, section sucks. It's like an underrated part of the run because generally you just go do it, right? But like, it's such a costly continue in every single section. It only requires that one minor slip up. I slip up. Oh! BMN, BMN has this 
BMN has the setup where you card yeah. shield there and then use uh, heat pad to get on the wall. He says it's absolutely safe. I've messed with it. It is kind of safe, but every time I see I it, I hold oh. my breath for a second. Yeah, I just <laughs> He nearly did the D line special. Like, oh. Because that's what you really want in this area. You want a strategy that's kind of safe. I thought you were going to say you want a D line special. I'm like, what? No. God. It's okay, guys. I've got this strategy. 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> oh, my God. Still close, but jeez. B man eking in front, right, with that like, a little bit cleaner here and there. Small, small that. gains in each room. And then as soon as you see that, he grabs the walls into a wall. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut up. I retire. I retire. <laughs> Commentator's curse. Oh, jeez, he's just he's having just little issues. He just struggled to do the panel. Like it just. Mm, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Mac as well. Cartwheel into the node. Like, mm. Oh, fast elevator for him. That's nice. That's huge. That's pretty big. That's like almost three seconds. Cheeky little Nikita pickup. B-Man did the safer way. Didn't rely on the uh, R3 flick thing. Nice frame one out of the water as well. Or near frame one. Probably like frame seven. I guess while we're waiting for Nikita, um, I don't think we ever explain why uh, why we don't do swim glitch just from here instead of uh, doing the whole Nikita section. If anyone's yeah. wondering why, because I remember when I first started off, I wondered why. Um, the reason is we need that level four card from the present. We cannot progress through the game. You can do swim glitch and get straight to vamp if you want to. But then afterwards, you're soft locked because you don't have the level four card. Yeah, not only can you not progress, but you can't even go back because the door yeah. behind you is a level four door as well. Um, so you're just literally trapped in Bamp's room forever. But if you know a way to get through that door, <laughs> you can earn a thousand dollars with the exclamation mark bounty. Oh, a little adjustment at the end there. It was unnecessary, but I get the feeling. You know when you don't want the missile to explode there, right? Because you're going to have to shoot another one, and that's a lot of time lost. So I get why he did the adjustment, but it wasn't necessary. All right. What are we going to see? Either one? Both? Both, both, one. both. Yeah, both. both. It's Swim Glitch Apocalypse, man. Both. I think Max. one. I think, I think Mac only. Mac I think I think BMN might be it. half considering to not do it. But maybe he must know Mac is gonna do it, right? Like, yeah, Mac would do it even if the positions were reversed. I feel. Yeah, I, I, Mac is a veteran at it. Oh, he, I got the card field this time. Very nice. Very nice. But yeah, I, Mac should. BMN could. The gap is at that right now. All right, I'm not going to say anything for Swim Glitch. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Well, dead zone. That was Ooh, weird. I got him there as well. Yikes. He didn't fire the gun, and that doesn't really mean anything, but... He's gone. Swim got your apocalypse. Told you it was upon us. Not a... Oh, this is wow. going to work. Ooh, he's One rising. Cycle. One cycle. Very One nice. Second. That was very close to not working. Mac has to go for it, and he is. Get up there, Five. Mac. Yeah. No, Get Mac. Get up there, Mac. Oh, oh, it's the worst feeling in the world. Oh, and he pressed up. Oh. He's got to abandon this. This, this is, this is huge. That's a huge time loss. Not only the fact that B-Man got a a one cycle swim glitch versus no swim glitch, which is almost 20 seconds, plus the failed attempts. That could borderline be GG. It's hard to see. We've all uh, we've all felt it when when you try and go up that wall and it's just not happening. We we don't have a perfect answer to swim glitch. We're getting better at it. You know, 
you know, all the runners together. Everyone's oh, BMM went the water and get out again on accident. Yikes. He went for the frame one rise, right? He, yeah. he got it in the second, it the second the try. <laughs> but. Yep. He only had one frame on the rise, but unfortunately, he lost 420 frames on the previous attempt. Right, right. <laughs> All right, let's see Max Vamp. Going for Turbo Vamp, very good, nice. But yeah, I, I mean, it was the right call. Yeah, it, it's pretty free to do as long as you do it in the right position and have enough ammo, but. Um, it's gonna take an awful lot now. Like the gap is is fairly significant. Yeah, Beeman didn't do conventional um, frame one like rises out of the water, but he still he was still getting them. Maybe he knows something we don't. Yeah, who knows? I mean, from a from a standings perspective right now, B-Man sits five and threes in the five seed right now. Um, a win would almost lock him into the four seed when it comes playoff time. So it's a, definitely an important game for him. Um, Mac McD is sitting right on the bubble. He sees two and six sitting at the number nine hole. Top eight make the playoffs. Um, this wasn't a must win for him. When we come back in, uh, it would be three weeks from to from tonight. Um, Mac McD and Tyler will play, and that very well could be for the final playoff spot. So, um, a win would have been nice here for Mac McD. It could have really almost secured a spot, but um, he'll have an opportunity uh, for his last game for sure against Tyler. Yeah, that's going to be one to watch. I feel like those two gonna have such an insanely close race right like this that's the old school of old school like tyler is known as a euro runner he's dabbled in ve quite a bit he dabbled on ve early on when mac was early on in ve so two old school runners really going at it to get into the playoffs it just it does not get any better than that we'll see how the rest of the standings shake out if that's going to be the scenario we'll know after this week wraps up um, but that's likely what it's going to be. Yeah, uh, Mac, I think, was the first player to get a 104, I believe. And yeah, 104 was the, Yeah, I think Tyler was the first person to get a, a 103 as well. He was 103.48. Yep. The perfect run, as we assumed it to be at the time. I remember that, yeah. It is the perfect run, yet... Let me just bring up the statistic. While you're doing uh, that, Mac just got bugs. It means he has to re-choke, otherwise she'll break free. So he'll choke again. He'll know this. Yep, old schooler. Can't beat the old school. So 103.48 was the perfect run. We've had 34 runs this league better than that. It shows you it's a whole change because it wasn't like he wasn't professing it to be perfect and everyone was like... No, we disagree. Everyone thought it was perfect. I think and, yeah. he was the first person, at least on the boards, to introduce non-lethal fab. Um, yeah, like it's one of the, it's one of those things where he introduced like a couple of risky strats that we were aware of, so it just felt like a perfect run at the time as well. Yeah, it was five plus one Harrier swim glitch. Uh, yeah. M well, M9, yeah, plus Batman. one wasn't always done. It was starting, to, it was like everyone yeah. was going for it, but it wasn't like you just got it. Not like nowadays where you see, so often see two people get it in a race. That just wasn't happening back then. But as we enter sniping section for B-Man, not too far behind with that. I do want to remind you, we got one more race to end the night tonight. That is Tino versus Platonic Guy. Um, should be a, an interesting matchup. Tino, another old school runner. Platonic, just crazy out of his mind. You know, he's played quite like it in league so far. Um, be interesting to see how that one fares. Um, big game for both, especially for Tino. Uh, just on, on the bubble right now for the playoffs. 
A win would be ginormous, but a loss wouldn't kill him either. Yeah, Tino needs it, right? Yeah, it's it's not a must win. Um, he's got three wins. He's got he's got an extra point because he lost in overtime against you. Um, with that one point, could be all the difference. That was the most ridiculous race of all time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Crazy things just keep happening. Yep. Plenty more to come, especially uh, with week 11 last week and then the, the playoffs in January. So. Uh. A little bit of stuttering from Max Feed. Possibly dropping some frames or something. I like the little nuances, the different ways everyone does this section. A lot of the time, I just kind of stand there and look out and do, like do nothing. And you get other players who are extremely active, drawing pictures and stuff. BMN is the type of player who, during these time sections, will literally do the minimal that you minimal amount of stuff that you need to do. You'll see an ascending colon and then rectum as well. Like there you go. He just like positioned himself perfectly to where the cipher is going to be. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, the artistry of that. Uh, I can't believe we're in the second to last week of regular league play. Yeah, we've been doing this for two and a half months already, and it's just it's just flown by just like that. There's been so much. We've learned so much. We've improved so much. We've had a lot of drama, a lot of close races. Um, Clearly, the people love it. Fans it, love it. So it's it's good. It can't have gone better. And I, I really just want to say thank you to everyone who's been showing up, getting involved. And, uh, you know, it's really made it. It really has. Yeah, hopefully we can have uh, another league in the future. Uh, maybe of a different game or something. Maybe like an MGS1 league or or something like that. Um, we're we're kind of kicking around some ideas. I, I think this... I think we will have some other league of some sort. It's just going to be a matter of what and how long and all those logistics. But yeah, uh, I think this works. More, more stuff. More stuff is coming. Like, I promise you that. We don't know quite what it is yet, but there will be more. I do want to remind you that this is the last week of League before we take a two-week break for the holidays, for Christmas and New Year's. Um, but we will be back tentatively Thursday, uh, January the 7th. I say tentatively because we want to try to get all five games on the, the Twitch channel here um, all in one day slash night. Um, due to some player availabilities, it may be pushed to like Saturday the 9th. We'll see. We're, we'll work on some scheduling later. But our goal is to have five matches in a row to end the regular season. Um, but we'll we'll keep you guys informed in the Discord and on the Twitter, whatever, however we can. Um, but week 11 should be epic when we come back. Yeah, it's going to be a, a big one. It isn't settled. Um, it will be by the end of the day. So what was your what was your favorite race line so far? Overtime. It has to be that one. <laughs> it has to be versus you. Like it, it had a chance tonight with the Makarov one, but yeah, no, it's overtime. Hundred percent. I was I was literally shaking most of it. So <laughs> I will be going back at some point and getting all the uh, all the best moments together. I mean, other than me being undefeated, but that's that's who cares about that, right? I didn't even notice you were competing. Yeah. Yep. Another day at the office. 
Still gotta play Mayu, but... We'll see. Anything can happen. I could have my gyro on on accident or something. I just, yeah. I mean, you can brag all you want, because literally no one's been able to beat you, so... You, you can have your time. Enjoy it. Yeah. I will, but... We got a race to focus on right now. Don't forget, everyone, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Well, hadn't happened yet. Anyway, B Man, done with sniping. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't take a continue here, otherwise, game on. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see a technique here called the David Wild Stairs, where you uh, mash the square button and you get to run at full speed for a few frames. Uh, which was recently found and that's the section you'll see generally everyone go for it because the game unequips you automatically you have to be unequipped to even attempt it saves about 0.69 seconds or something i wish it's a very precarious uh, position on the way to the arsenal elevator because if you fall through the uh, panels if you get shot by the cipher and fall you lose about a minute because you get put all the way back to the start of that time section you have to go through uh, a couple of game over screen and a load zone and stuff. It's really rough. We have seen people take game over stuff. Yeah, it hasn't been many, but it's it can be an issue for some, especially if you're low on ammo, um, which I don't think neither. I mean, being a human was fine, obviously. I think Mac's going to be fine as well. Yeah, you'll see a lot of runners when vamp one ends you'll notice that a lot of runners will pick up both ak ammo boxes just to make sure they always have enough ammo if anything goes astray High concentration of cerebral implants have they altered your memory too All right, looks like B-Man, or Mac McD, sorry. Yep, he gets through clean. Wasting his ammo for kicks and grins at this point, and he's going to enter Arsenal gear as well, which, which can be tricky, especially with Trigenum coming up, and not necessarily the, the fights, per se. Um, Trigenum's probably going to be the last realistic opportunity for Mac to pull all this, this out. Uh, he needs a massive screw-up from B-Man. Miss the gap, get an alert, um, something. BMN has that setting turned on where you don't get like the letterbox thing. Um, so you can see Raiden's crotch there. Is there somebody there? Yep, so he's gonna go the I, route, go towards the guard. I hate yeah. this room. <laughs> I think everyone's starting to adopt the punch thing now. It just gives I, you a cleaner cartwheel through, so yeah. like it's really yeah. good, I think. But yeah, now it's gonna be miracle at best. But Pretty much just swim glitch, the failed swim glitch, and the fact that B-Man got a first one cycle swim glitch, like, I mean, that's pretty much the difference right now. Max played much more like himself this game. He, he had, you know, a mishap on swim glitch, it can happen to anyone. Yeah. He's played really well. Yeah, everything else has been very clean, so can no gripes for sure. You say it needs a miracle, and miracles can happen in this section of the game like oh, it, it's it not can, uncommon it I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying what the gap I oh, mean we it, got kicked oh it's rough now he got the no, double knockout he... double KO yeah. double KO is good you don't get an alert you lose time for being knocked down but it could be so much worse the weirdest one I've seen is when you cart me way too early and then you just like go through the guard himself. Cartwheel doesn't hit him and he tries to kick you but he also misses. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. 
We have seen people do the alert strat in Jejunum, right, in League. We have seen people go for it. You can actually just take an alert off the guard, and it's like frames faster as long as you do it all perfectly. Not advisable in League play, but we have seen it. I think I went for it um, in my run versus Joe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the cursed run. That's how yeah. <laughs> It was so cursed, I thought, might as well go for it. Alright, Tengu won. Pretty clean. Standard. Good job to I be man. I've said this a few times, but I do want to point out that, like, mistakes on Tengu 1 are way rarer than they used to be back in the day. There used to be, like, such a point in the run where you'd be like, oh my god, are they going to get door, door glitch first time? And it doesn't seem like that anymore. I think the way Yemen does Tengu 2, the best week setup, is really good. I never see him get the weird thing with the stinger where, like, it's moving by itself at the start. Yeah, this has looked exceptionally fast so far. Yeah. There, there is a risk that all runners face at Tengu 2. Um, Snake should, for the most part, just annihilate every single guard. But in some very rare cases, he can get stuck in a loop uh, where he shoots a sword guard, the sword guard blocks, and while he's shooting, he gets shot by another Tengu. And he just gets stuck in this loop forever, and he can actually die. It's it's so incredibly rare, but it, it, it's possible. Yeah, it's one of those that on like extreme and European extreme. The the difficulties where we do the choke skip, you you'll see that happen a lot actually if you run the game. But on very easy, it kind of rarely happens because we are dealing with half the guards. Sorts of trouble. Well, he shot himself. In that situation, it's, it's better to just wait and let Snake deal with the Tengus and then shoot your Stingo when it's safe. You shouldn't fire one at the face of the Tengu like that, but I can... I understand the sense of urgency that you can feel in that situation to just start firing Stingers and eliminating Tengus. Other than the start, these Tengus look good. Except for that one, which just doesn't want to come out. Yeah, as one Tengu <laughs> runs back into the spawn. <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing. There is huge RNG in this room. Tengus should spawn and then run out and jump off the ledge. Sometimes they just don't. Sometimes they'll stand still, they'll run back into the spawn. Uh, it's just another room with massive, massive variants. This, this is over for Mac. That's pretty quick. That was pretty quick. Yeah, despite the, the errors um, early on, yeah, not too bad, but gap is about hmm, probably a minute. 15-ish right now. This speech is 90 seconds, so... Um... Spot the difference, everyone. <laughs> Standard raise from B-Man. That's a weird position. Really close. Jeez. Yeah, yeah so like, I mentioned, as well. <laughs> like... like I mentioned earlier, B-Man likes to have like the minimal amount of inputs as possible, so like he'll stand as close as possible to that rate. Even during like Rectum, if you saw he just stood still the whole time, kind of like how Mac is doing right now. Looking at the RTA right now, this is a damn fast race out of both of them. This is a, it's been a good race. Really nice performance. We get to see B-Man Solidus. I think B-Man straight up has the best Solidus out of everyone in League. It's uh, it's exceptional, especially his phase two. What do you hope to hear? You know he doesn't know anything. It's not him I want the answers from. All right, let's see all Mac does with Ray's standard start. And go a few more steps back. Not too bad. Yeah, you can go a little bit soon with the Stinger when the Ray jumps on stage. you got to be careful with that. It has iframes until it's like completely landed, right? Pretty much. Until the the hitbox appears. Anyway, Solidus from uh, BMN. 
Yeah, we always open with a punch against Solidus. That allows us to start swiping. If, if, if you just open with swipes, unless you're at the perfect range, um, Solidus will do like a dodge and you can't hit him. But if you punch first, that just completely gets rid of that. We move away from Solidus between phase one and two, so he gets a shorter dash. Saves about a second. He'll dash to the side furthest away from you. It's looking good so far. So what B-Man does is he puts his back to Solidus so he can immediately move away. And Solidus will stop where you were. And very that was very fast. Very, very fast. Very fast. It, 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 it won't point? be PB, but um, it'd be close. This is a this is a one or two two X ish. This yeah, I think it was like a fifty three flat on his IGT, wasn't it? Yeah, which would be a one hundred two twenty six or something like, like. This is the consistency he's developing. Week eight, one hundred two twenty one. Week nine, one hundred two twenty three. This is like a one hundred two twenty five or six probably. The consistency is remarkable from him. And he's going to be a threat to win the whole thing. For sure. 100%. Really, really talented runner. And yeah, that was a nuts performance. Max into phase two now on Soldus. Gets the short dash as well. People's elbow, that's the one you hope for. Well, not that time. And that is time. Oop. Trouble with that slight. There we go. GG, Mac McD. Played really well. Um, you know, Do you remember this place? if you uh, finish ahead of your opponent's PB, you can always say, like, you know, you think no matter what they did, uh, I still would have won this. Um, and you can never really feel bad about losing to that as well. Like, you just got to try your hardest, but when someone's finishing ahead of your PB, it's, uh, it's, it's a big mountain to climb. Yeah, yeah no, it was a really good race from a run from Mac as well. I think it was just really swim glitch, which, you know, anyone who's tried swim glitch has, like, experienced a one cycle and then a type of swim glitch where you just have to abandon it. And I, I think this will still be a 103 for Mac, which is still a pr pretty good time. So, despite the issues. But per league rules, we will go to the score screen to get their official time and score. And, and we got one more match coming up. So be sure to stick around. Can't listen to the music, sorry, Monka DMCA, but you know how it is. Music is cancelled. Sorry. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, I could give us a quick rendition of it if you'd want, if you want right now. Um, I'd rather not. Oh, okay. <laughs> My ears just shaking ahead at me. <laughs> For the sake of everyone. <laughs> Platonic just informed us he's just gonna get ready for his race so we do thank him for for commentating and uh, helping out with this race um give him a few minutes to prep for his race i don't blame him so it, it was nice to have a tri cast right like it's been a while since we've had one mm -hmm. always like talking about uh this run i feel like i could talk about this run until the sun goes cold uh, i like this game a lot it's a it, it's a decent game. I'll give it that. It's a decent game. Yeah, so it's 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 all right. Yeah. Uh, Mac McDee's gonna feel confident about his final race. I think based on uh, his performance here, played really well. But yeah, I how it's shaking out. I think this, like I said before, I think this is gonna set the stage for week eleven. Tyler Mac McDee. For the final playoff spot, I mean, there's a couple things to to worry about first before we get there, but that's what it's going to look like, and that's going to be one one hell of a match. So I know Mac McD really wants to get in the playoffs. He really wants to, so he's going to be playing his heart out. That's so. That's what happens. I say you got the best races in this game. Something, a little something on the line. 
It's been a, a damn fine league. <coughs> so, Tino versus Platonic. Uh, Tino has had some inconsistent performances. Platonic has had some circumstances uh, which has prevented him from playing his best. Some controller issues. Mm -hmm. uh, don't want to see anything like that today. And as you say, we've not seen a full strength Platonic in this league so far, right? Yeah, not think... really. I mean, he's had two 102s. Um, they were high 102s, but we've seen him get a 102.48. We've seen him get a 106.25 controller issues, but we've seen him get a 104 as well. So he's he's kind of inconsistent-ish to a degree. He's just not been... He hasn't put 100% A game into a run yet. Mm -hmm. um, it could be based on his opponent, circumstances, other stuff. I mean, Tino, on the other hand, very talented runner. He has no reason he can't get a 103. He just... There's just always something looming that's just big, whether it's the core or, or whatever else. But um, it, it could it's, be interesting. But it's I, mind blowing that Tino doesn't have a 103. Do you know how many things yeah. in this run are named after him? Like you watch someone do something, you're like, oh, yeah, that's the Tino. Like he, he doesn't have a 103. Mind blowing. Uh, perfectly capable of getting one. Like 100%, 100%. It's, it, it's just going to straight happen. Like. Yes, <laughs> one oh four oh one. So we'll see. I mean, anything can happen. Um, I think we got uh, McD joining us. Hello, hell yeah! Hey, dude, welcome, Mac McD. My God, this game is loud. <laughs> well, that was a that was a race. Yeah. Um, other than the whole swim glitch thing, I think you you play play pretty well. Um, obviously, B man's the uh, god of this game at this point like geez yeah dude is ridiculously good i'm i was watching pretty much the whole time so uh, i was happy that going up to swim glitch i was still that close to him i was ahead for a bit i mean as far as the feeds were concerned but mm -hmm. um yeah but getting all the way to swim glitch and still just nipping at his heels i'm that's that's a win in my book yeah i mean if you're gonna lose a race it might as well be at swim glitch. It's like, if you're going to lose a race, it should be at swim glitch or at Harrier, basically. Like it, if it happens there, you kind of just throw up your arms and be like, well, I mean, it's a race environment like that could happen to anybody. Right. Yeah. Better to lose yeah. it to swim glitch than to lose it to like holds or, you know, um, a D lime special or something like that. Right. Which right. I've done too. So yeah, both but, uh... of you look like you were going in the drink at that point. Like, Mac, you had the, like, wobble where you go forward, run I back, go that. forward. I hate it so much. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. me, I'm, I'm I'm the original Mac McD fan 92, so, uh, uh, you know, when you were keeping it really close with him at the start, I was like, Mac's doing it, Mac's doing it in my head. I, you know, I, I'd love to have seen you uh, win this race today. Um, but when someone's scoring, like, a low 102, it's, it, it's hard, right? It's a yeah, hard game. Yeah, no kidding, yeah. Like BMN's PB is almost a full minute ahead of mine. It's it's quite the thing. That's that's a lot of time. He's uh he's a polished runner. He's one of the the consistent runners, right? Like racing a consistent runner, like like a BMN or a Platt or a or a Limes. It's it's always scary because you know you you can't really make those mistakes because they're probably not going to. You just gotta hey. you know you gotta bring your A game, and I feel like I did. Especially with minimal practice. You know me, this whole league, I've been doing it on minimal practice. I did a little bit of a warm up for probably three quarters of a run and then just figured, what the hell? I know this game. Let's try it and see what happens. And almost did it. When, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like when you're this, when you've done this many, I mean, you must have done over a thousand attempts at this game at this point easily. Like um, you can let the hands take over to some extent. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. Like, I did notice that I saw a couple of comments in chat about my flick shot at the beginning, and my first thought was just like, "I've been doing flick shots since while well, you guys were still playing Fortnite." Like, <laughs> <laughs> true, so true. But, yeah. um, sometimes, like you, I, I feel like we, you know, we look at like B Man and Lime's score screen, and we're like, "Where the hell did they get that minute from?" Because like, I, I, I don't know where that minute exists. Me neither. I really don't get it, but. You know, I bet you if I grinded, I could, I could, I could at least get my mid one hundred two. But uh, 
We'll I see. So. We'll see if after after league and well, let's see BMS time here. All right, he has got a. Oh my god! Yep. So his the last three weeks, he's gotten a 102, 21, 23, and twenty six. You talk about consistency. Yeah, more consistent than that. No, that's forty seconds better than my the best run I've ever done. Oh, actually, no, 20, 37, because I do have a one hundred three hundred three I haven't posted. But yeah, like BMN's just is one of the best. He's a beast. If he, if he grinded for world record, he could get it for sure. So, but, but what you were saying, Mac, like you've proven multiple times that you can come back and compete with whoever is, you know, at the top of this game. Like you go away for a while, you come back, you've proven it multiple times that you can do it. There's no doubt in my mind that you could get a, a, a 102 just like that yourself. And we'd love to see that as well. I'm also the oldest person in this competition by a considerable margin, am I not? So I'll take that. I'm, I'm holding my own. For an old man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. I think I think yeah, like we got we got uh, some old older people in the league. We've got some younger people. It's a it's a good mix. Oh, I better mash. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> uh, All right. Okay, three fifty three. That's not bad. It's not a one hundred four. I'll take it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right on, GG BMN. Thanks for having me. Yep, GG. So, um, barring some other circumstances, it, this could be Mac McD Tyler for the last playoff spot in Week Eleven. So we'll we'll see how things shake out, but it ain't over yet, and it ain't over yet tonight either. We got one more match on the docket: Tino versus Platonic Eye. We're gonna take you to a short intermission, and then we're gonna get set up for the final race of the night. Hope you stick with us, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. See you soon. <laughs>